Joining me are two special guests. They're with the band Universal Honey, Leslie Statuick and Johnny Sinclair. And they're here to talk about their new EP and their holiday album. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Christine. Yeah, I'm so excited. Like before I ask you, how did you come up with the title? I want to go back to when you were with their Pursuit of Happiness. And this was in 1988, is this right? Yeah, I was in the I was in the in the band at the formation, which was eighty five, eighty six ish kind of thing, and then um, Leslie joined in eighty eight uh, before we recorded uh, Love Junk, our first album. So, yeah, so yeah. Too- and then and then in nineteen ninety, that's when we sort of left and started doing yeah. yeah. So tell us what was that like being in the band, the pursuit of happiness? It was a blast. It was a whirlwind. I mean, really. You know, soon after I joined, all it was just like we went out on the road right away, and then you know we were signed by Chrysalis Records out of New York City, and then we um, did uh, you know a U.S. tour with Duran Duran. That was amazing. Wow. It was just it was so much fun, and and then we went to Europe and um, did the tour with the Eurythmics. And um, so it was just a whirlwind and just very exciting, a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we just, we had a blast and just recording was awesome in Woodstock. We love Woodstock, New York. It's just, yeah, it's so cool. And um, yeah, it was a real blast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and sharing the stage with Duran Duran, the Eurythmics and um, so I, you know, have this song in my head, like she's so young, you know, I can't yeah. sing. <laughs> <laughs> you did pretty good there. <laughs> no, but I mean, thank, but, um, no, just, uh, it was, but so you, how did you two meet? Like you are a couple, right. And, and you are an accomplished songwriters as well. So tell us about that. Well, well <laughs> <you know. laughs> um, we just want to know. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, we met in the, in the band. Um, we had uh, started the group originally as a three piece, then we added two two girls, and at some point, I think the three of us decided that maybe we should get different girls because maybe this was just. Not exactly. I think Mo wanted another guitar player, so we got a girl to play guitar. And then we were looking for a backup singer, so Mo put the word out. And Leslie came over to audition one day when Mo, Dave, and I were just hanging out at, at their place. Uh, Dave and I were playing foosball, and Leslie showed up for her audition. And, um, you know, we kind of saw each other and became pretty fast friends. So, and, yeah. here, and here we are, you know. Yeah. So it's eight, nine, ten albums later and a fourteen year old boy and oh, still yeah. going strong. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty it was pretty instant friendship for sure. And and um I had always written before, I'd always written music even before Pursuit of Happiness. So um I came into the band, um it was like, oh, we'd still keep writing and then um once we became friends, we just started writing together. It was just a natural process. And uh yeah, and then it's just continued on, of course, because we just love music so much, and we love to play it, and we love to record it, and I mean, music is amazing, right? Like, yes. who doesn't love music? Like, find a person that doesn't love music. So, yeah, it's just a big, huge part of our lives, and I think that's really what's probably bonded us for so long, and and um, mm-hmm. just our friendship and our love of music. Was there a pivotal moment that you knew, yes, we write well together. We sing. Like how? Tell us how you knew that was magic. Well, you know, I think that um, I guess I guess we knew that it was kind of magical pretty much right off the get go because there was chemistry there. So there was definitely a spark there right away, and uh, I think just try like trying to find our way with writing together was just added to it you know it just added to the excitement um the, the growth of the friendship of the relationship and uh so yeah it was pretty instant it was pretty intense 
you know, right up together. Yeah, and then there were times when we when we started living together, and we would always just record in the living room on you know software based uh, recording stuff, mm-hmm. and we recorded <laughs> several albums just in our living room. There'd be times when um, you know. Friday night, I'd pick Les up at work and we'd go to the fish market and go to the St. Lawrence market and grab some fish for the weekend. And then oh, uh, we'd just Friday night cocktails and writing and <laughs> Saturday, Sunday recording. And I think we didn't get out of our sweatpants many weekends, just sitting in there doing music. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's so inspiring. And, and you know, and it is magic um, what you're doing. I mean, like I, you know, I love the title, Universal Honey, and I understand it came from, you're talking, you're, you've been writing for a long time, like, and this Universal Honey came in high school, was that right? Yeah, it was a song, like, I had a writing partner through high school, my bestie, Nadine Rusinek, yes. and we wrote a ton of music together, and one of the songs was Universal Honey, and so later, when we were having a Typical time <laughs> for the band. Then um, that that came up, and it was like, okay, let's go for it because we were under the gun, and we had we were doing the EP at the, our first Joy EP, Mitchell. the yeah. first EP at the time, or no, the, the compilation. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the Joni Mitchell tribute, and we were asked to be on it, and we had to come up with a name. It was just like, well, let's just use <laughs> the old song name, Universal Honey. <laughs> No, it suits well. And you have seven albums, is that right? Um, Magic Basement, uh, Earth, Moon, Transit, Universal Honey, Fearless, I'm going on here, sorry. Uh, Can't Stop, and then uh, Vicious Circles, is that right? Seven, yeah. Seven. And and an EP, and then another EP now, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. And we also have another project with, uh, our second album coming out called Tucker Lane, and we also did an electronic album called The Bot. <laughs> yeah, so, so we've done a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I mean, like, I, I want to talk about your, you know, I, I've been listening to the song Rolling Back Time. It's so catchy. And oh. and I see you at the um, around a campfire and with the acoustic guitar, you know, this, and it is so, I just love it. And yeah. so, Tell us about the new EP now. There are six songs, right? Yeah. Uh, so it was a it was a it was a project that we started uh, a while ago, and then we just kind of we didn't really we didn't get around to finishing it, and it just sort of sat there for a while. And um, when the lockdown came, and we had a lot more time on our hands, we thought, like you know, let's finish this. These are good songs, <laughs> and, so, and so we set about to finishing it up and. Uh, putting it out our first new music in well over a decade yeah yeah, yeah. for sure yeah yeah they're rocking we just love the songs and love the music and and doing the the campfire sessions was so much fun because yes. yeah yeah we hadn't played live and like with universal honey for so long and you know um just revisiting some of the songs from the albums like um we did uh, a couple of songs well, make, from make my mind, Circles. Make yeah. My Mind's going up today on the campfire sessions. That's another one that's going up. From, that's from Earth, Moon, Transit. Yeah, we did Just Before Mary Go. Yeah, we did Just Before Mary Go. So, mm-hmm. and of course, Rolling Back Time. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we just, and we also just think Rolling Back Time is so um, yeah just relevant too now for what's going on. And then there's another song on the EP called What's, uh, what's Going On, uh, Going On Around Me. And it's just about just kind of like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. It worked out just like it's it's very relevant now. Yeah. Well, rolling back time, the video is you're in a, a subway. And it's like, can you tell us what it's about? Like, going, like don't go back to the past. Keep go, moving forward. Is that? Yeah, basically. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, you know, change is going to come, right? So mm-hmm. there's those that cling to the past and want to, and want to, and want to live in that sort of thing and it's not it's not it's not a solution to the problems of today i don't think it's you know everybody's got to get their head in the game there's going to be a lot of change in the, in the next decade and i think that everybody's got to get on board or we're doomed yeah we've got to move <laughs> forward as a as a society and just get along and be harmonious and and so but it's just what johnny said some people are just really um fearful of that change I think and want to stay you know back in the past because they, they think it's comfortable there 
because sometimes the future is scary for all of us. Change is scary for all of us. But, you know, um, the solution isn't to go backwards. The, the solution is to find the courage and just go like, like we're going forward. Like we're always moving forward as a society together. I mean, you know, some things would be fun to go visit in the past. Yes. Like, you know, the, the old day, like, the you know, whatever, the, the old West or something would be like, I'd like to maybe visit that, but would I like to live there constantly? No. I'd like to, I'd like to visit myself 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, the, you are inspirational. Like, you know, music is universal. And we need music in our lives. And especially right now with COVID or the pandemic, the election, everything that's going on. And um, so your message, what is your message to people who, who are, you know, listening to your music? Or who are, who are what? Yeah, what, what's your message? Like, what do you want people to get from your music? I think... Ultimately, I want people, like, this is going to sound kind of corny, but I'd like them to get some joy mm. and some sense that there's connection to something else other than what we see and what takes our minds away from the fact that, that we are connected to source. And um, that's where a lot of creative inspiration comes from. And I think that's why why when you see a piece of artwork that 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 you connect with it makes you stop in time like there's no time when you connect with something it takes you away from the craziness the crazy mind and all of that and yes. it just centers you right so i hope that that's what the message is with our music is that to bring a little piece a little slice of joy in that like what how we felt when we listened to music um growing up you know was just like music was our safe haven music was you know our little bubble of happy in a time when maybe our parents were fighting or when we couldn't figure out like what the why why are people fighting what's going on like we just found music brought us through that because it, it i think it, it connects us to something different something deeper yeah, and I, I hope also that people see us and just think, you know, like, don't quit. Just, it's our passion and, you know, we're not big superstars. We do it because we love it and we find joy. And we, it makes us happy to, to do it. And, you know, nowadays more than ever, it's easy to present that to the world. You can do it all from your home. You don't have to have a big record label. I mean, sometimes it might be your mom and your sister that are listening to your song, but, you know, hopefully you'll find other people to to listen to it as well and yeah. it's just just don't give just up. don't give up just if it's something you enjoy and you and you're, you talk about the magic and if you're not finding the magic right away if you're persistent and, and consistent um the magic will happen you know mm -hmm. so, yeah. yes well said i mean you've been around for a long time you're an established canadian band and you started in 1992 university yeah. Yes. Yeah, kind of. Uh, after 1990, when we left the pursuit of happiness, we started a sort of interim band, and it was called Loud Factory. And we were playing around southern Ontario quite a bit, and it was going pretty good. And then one day, one of our members just said, "I'm, I'm quitting the band," and no hard feelings. And he just went on his way, and it sort of really changed the dynamic. And then other things happened. It sort of just presented an opportunity for us to become universal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How how would you describe your music? <gasps> well, I think we describe it as different things. Like, um, of course, there's pop in there. You know, yes. there's definitely that kind of those, you know, melodies that are, um, you know, the inspiration that I always had was just with really great melodies, really almost sweet melodies. Like, you know, um, so definitely pop is in there. Um, yeah. But I, we love rock and roll. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we love um, all rock and roll, all yeah. forms of rock and roll. Yeah, so I guess, you know, you could go like, we grew up with 60s, 70s, and we lived through the 80s and 90s. So there's elements of every decade in our music, right? So um, it's a guitar rock, you know, and nowadays, as I say, the guitar guitar sales are, you know, through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's yeah. mostly young girls that are buying guitars. 
Oh, so. Well, yeah, you. Zero <laughs> 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 flowers. Because <laughs> you really play the guitar very well. I, yeah, I love the guitar so much. Yeah. Yeah. And you work so, like, you're so incredible. You're so connected. And I. And I and I want to know about your Christmas album. Now this started in July, is that right? On a yes, yeah, yeah, it was in the, it was the middle of the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know there's a song in there too, Christmas time in the summertime. So yeah. yeah. So I mean, we did this uh, uh like a while ago, right? And it's yes. just we're just we're just. We're just getting it out now on all on all digital and streaming platforms because it wasn't yeah. widely released and widely available before. We kind of felt that was a shame, but we kind of got the rights back to putting stuff out on our own. And um, so we we added added four tracks to it, and it's called the Christmas Bonus Edition. Mm. So can't stop thinking about Christmas. Also has now uh, Winter Wonderland, White Christmas, and Little Gemmer Boy. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it was uh, all original. Originally, it was just an, an all original Christmas album, with the exception of uh, I Saw Three Ships. Was on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's lots so, of great guests on there, like lots of great Canadian musicians in there. And uh, oh, just it, I love that album, I really do. I just think it's so much fun, and it's just again, it brings a little slice of joy. And now we play it here, and I'm always dancing around to it. And um, yeah, it's fun. Yes, and Cop Can't Stop Thinking About Christmas is available digital and live streaming, right? So you got it. Yeah. Yes, that's, I mean, we need Christmas. We need all holidays, you know? <laughs> know. <laughs> you were, no, so inspiring, and thank you. And, and people want to check out your music. Where can they go? Well, definitely, our, um, you can always check our goings on on our um on our uh, websites and our social media pages, um, Spotify, of course, you can check us out there or any of the digital or streaming platforms. Uh, yeah, Universal yeah. Honey. Just Google Universal Honey or Google Tucker Lane. Um, each band has its own social media pages. Honey Tunes has its own social media and website as well. So we have three websites and lots of social media and we try to keep that all up to date too. So, uh, yeah. That's wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to add? So I just want to say, um, everybody, stay the course, yeah. stay safe. You're wonderful. You've got such an amazing energy. It's been so lovely speaking with you. And I just wanted to say that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, thank you both so much. And I'd love to do another entry with you in maybe six months down the road. Sure. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Let's schedule it in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yes. We <laughs> <can enjoy it. laughs> thank you both so much. Joining me is Canadian singer-songwriter Mary Garnett Edwards, who's here today to talk about her passion for music, her debut album, White Lightning, and what is next for her. Welcome, Mary. Thank you for having me. I, I am so happy to be here today. Yes, and I understand your passion for music began when you wrote your first song at the age of 10? Yeah, well, my passion actually started when I was really little at, at around five and six, I was singing. And I'd sit in the back of the car, and we had a big family, and we'd have to scrunch into the back all these kids. And I'd get bored, and I'd also get car sick. Oh. And so to distract myself, I would um, sing to Bobby Vincent, Blue Velvet. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and I sing it real darn good, too. And my mom would say, gee, Mary, you have a good singing voice. So that started me, because when you get a little bit of attention for something that you do good, you want to keep doing it, you know? That's how you get noticed in a big family. <laughs> wow. When you say a big family, like how many? Uh... We had seven. Wow, seven. So Yes, I was the second youngest of seven. My goodness. And like so do you come from a family of musicians? 
Um, well, my dad actually sang in a choir when he was young. Mm -hmm. And I think my mother had a good tone to her speaking voice and sort of a good singing voice, too, I think. So I, I think it's something that you kind of inherit or can. Um, mine was more, I just like to sing. So I think that, you know, it wasn't something that's trained like young people learning to play piano or something. And I started to play guitar by the time I was 10 and 11. Wow. So... Um, I just do little chords and I would write songs. Well, it's wonderful. And your first performance, what was that like? One of the first places I ever did play was I was um, 10 or 11. And I played on um, the, an Edmonton show. Um, it was like something popcorn playhouse or yes. something like that. So I was on that in Edmonton, and then from there, I went to the Barricade Coffee House because I was doing folk songs, mm. yeah. you know, so I started uh, doing folk songs at the Barricade Coffee House, and then once I moved out to Vancouver, I started doing whatever little uh, folk house gigs I could find. Um, open open uh, mic nights, you know, get in there and put your name and wait for hearing everybody else and then now it's your turn and I would get up and I'd play three or four songs and get down and go home. Um, so yeah, and then I started playing in rock bands mm -hmm. and uh, I did a little bit of metal when I was young, you know, when I was 19 and 20, but uh, I found it really, the metal would really uh, make my voice sore. So I dropped out of metal and I thought, well, you know, what's my statement here? Is it, is it a positive statement? Am I, what am, what's, you know, what's good about it? So I went back to poetry. Mm. I really liked to be able to sing songs that had a bit of a story or mm -hmm. a feeling to it. So I wrote a lot of the songs on my scene when I was young, you yes. know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Wow, yeah. what a gift. And I mean, do you remember your first song that you wrote? Uh, I think it was called 1967. And uh, it was just a little protest song 